Welcome to the latest episode of Five on the Floor in the Five Reasons Sports Network. Thanks for joining us on your favorite podcast app, Red Circle, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. Also, the Five Reasons YouTube channel and Spotify. If you're on the YouTube channel, make sure you hit like, subscribe, turn the notifications on. Also, we do want to mention something about prize picks. We know that some of you may have heard that they're going away in the state of Florida. They are not as of this point. So do not be concerned about that. You can still use the code FIVE, F-I-V-E. Get that initial deposit matched up to $100. You can play NFL NBA and more, of course, is the official fantasy sponsor of the Five Reasons Sports Network. Use the code five, get it matched again right before an NFL weekend. I just took a look at Tua's prop. I might play that one even with Jalen Waddle out. We'll see against the Denver defense at home with the Dolphins home opener. Go to prize picks, use the code five, F I V E, get that initial deposit matched up to a hundred dollars. And now, today's episode. Down to this game. Yay. Uh, five on the floor. Ride for my dogs. Where is the thing? You can check the score. Hustle hard, couple scars, wearing bubble frogs. Just like Buckley said, you in trouble, y'all. Check the floor plan. Got an all band. Y'all seen the block. Stop the one hand. And Pat, we trust. It's power, have the guts. We're here to bring the heat. Y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. All right, welcome back to Five on the Floor. Here's today's floor plan. I'm Ethan Skolnick. You can follow me, Ethan J. Skolnick, on the Five Reasons Sports. We got Alex Toledo. You can follow him at Tropical Blanket, and you might remember this guy back from a business trip and nothing happened. You can follow him at Greg Sylvander. He's Greg Sylvander, and he's been very emotional the past few days, so we're going to try to do something about that. Uh, what we are going to do today is we're going to play off of this. I have to give timestamps on all this stuff now because the, everything is fluid, uh, <laughs> except for this process of acquiring Dave Lillard, in which case it seems like it's jagged. It's all over the place. But uh, we'll go to this. OK, I put a poll up yesterday. Uh, we And right now it's about 419 p.m. on Saturday. So on Friday. When everybody was freaking the bleep out about various reports that are out there, which is the noise that I think was expected during this process. But, of course, the difference is that when there used to be trade negotiations and they were not done on Twitter or through Twitter, nobody knew about how the sausage was being made. Now everybody's seeing it and everybody's getting sick. And, you know, I I go back to 2004 when the Miami Heat – you know, found out that Zach, that Shaquille O'Neal was available because basically the Lakers were pursuing Pat Riley to return to their organization and mentioned, you know, Shaq wasn't getting the contract extension he wanted and he was unhappy. Hey, you know what? We, Shaq might be available. If Heat fans had known that process, okay, they would have freaked out and said, you know what? Just give him Dwayne Wade. Just take him. Just take him. Uh, instead of what ended up happening, which was Karan Butler, uh, Lamar Odom, and, uh, and you know, it's sort of an agent at that point, Brian Grant, uh, for contract purposes. And so, again, I'm trying to caution everybody to kind of relax, but it doesn't seem like most people are. So I'm going to go to this poll here. Should the Heat, dot, 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 question mark, I put this out 20 hours ago, play hardball or, or capitulate and offer all? So I did not give anybody a middle option, Okay. Play hardball, which basically just means stay in your corner and wait till Portland circulates around the league. And maybe they come up with a deal and maybe they don't. I still think they don't. Or capitulate, bang down Joe Cronin's door and say, give us Dame Lillard. Take everything you want except Jimmy and Bam in perpetuity. 52% said play hardball. I was actually surprised that one based on the activity on Twitter yesterday. 48% said capitulate and offer all. All right. So here's where I come down on the capitulate and offer all folks. All right. I want to make something clear. They need to get Dame Lillard. I'm not backing off of that. Things can exist at the same time here. I believe that this team that they have can win the East as it is. I do. Just like it did last year. Because by the way, they won the East. I know they were the seventh seed and they were eight because of the play-in. They won the East. They beat the two teams when it mattered that everybody said that they couldn't beat based on the way that they played all year. And those are still the two teams that they would have to beat. And neither of those two teams is significantly better than last year. In fact, you can argue 
they might have gone a little bit backwards. And now Milwaukee's got to deal with a situation that their franchise player doesn't seem to really want to be there for the long term. And Boston traded one of its heartbeats during the playoffs for a guy who probably won't be healthy once the playoffs come in Porzingis. And now they're dealing with their own drama with Malcolm Brogdon. Okay. So the Heat are in no worse position than they were when they went up against the Denver Bron- uh, Denver Broncos. <laughs> See, they <carried> down this <laughs> week. Uh, the Denver Nuggets. Okay, usually I make the mistake where I'm talking Dolphins. I end up mentioning NBA stuff. Um, the Denver Nuggets. They're no worse position than they were when that series started. In fact, I would agree. I would argue that they're in better position. They have 23 year old Tyler Hero is highly motivated. They've got young players who are ready for a role. They brought in Josh Richards, and yes, they've lost Struess and Vincent. But I think their overall roster is better than it was when they went to training camp last year and when they went to the finals. Okay. So I, I believe they're better positioned than they were. I still think they need to go get Dame Lillard. I, I want to make that clear. Like those two things can exist, okay? But this is a process. And this is a process that the Portland Trailblazers are not engaging in in good faith. You are dealing with an a, a mo- apparently emotional. We had Aaron Fentress on a very lengthy, uh, and he's of course works for the Oregonian, but he's been on Dame's side on all of this. And he basically acknowledged that the Blazers are just acting emotionally right now, that this is a lot of this is spite. They're hurt. And so, you know, they, they don't want to send Dame where he wants to go. And they also, they don't want to be forced to send him to Miami. And, you know, they, so they want to shop this thing around. They're entitled to shop it around, but they have not acted in the fashion that most teams act here. Okay. They're not doing NBA business the normal way. All right. And so it's playing out publicly. With all of these different sources and tentacles, and as I've mentioned, when, you're, when you've got deals that can't really be two-team deals, and they're going to be three, four, five, six-team deals, even though the Heat have executed more of those deals than any franchise over the past 20, 25 years, you end up with more sources, in quotes, okay? You end up with more people who've heard this or heard that, and it's not sequential. It's not linear. You may have heard something that was happening three days ago, but now is the time that someone told you about it. Again, I reported that the Heat had no contact with the Blazers from the end point of Summer League seven weeks after that contact ended because that's when I spoke to the person who confirmed that for me. And that's just how this works. Not It's not like a timeline where you're like, okay, I'm going to check in and punch a clock. Well, I talked to this person and at this point, and then this, he talked to me, and they talked, no. This is this branches all over the place and they're all entangled and all the rest of this stuff. So this stuff starts to leak out on social media, which again, you didn't have really pre 2008, 2009, right? This wasn't happening when the Boston put its big three together or even really 2010 with the heat was really the first time that you got a lot of that LeBron, all of that. That was really the first time. So all of this stuff is out there now. And so it just causes people to panic. Here's what I want to say about that. The Heat are not panicked. As of 425 Eastern on Saturday, I can tell you, okay, definitively, the Miami Heat are not panicked by what's out there. They're not. Does that mean they're going to ultimately end up with Dame Lillard? I can't guarantee that. They can't guarantee that. But what I'm telling you is the way that some fans were acting yesterday was making people inside the Heat organization laugh. In fact, a quote I got from one was, hold on. Give me a second, because this is worth it. I just I just need a second here. I feel so seen throughout all of this. It is like people are binging on steroids and Skittles. Okay? That's a saucy like, nugget. Like, just calm the, I fuck, agree down. It. Calm the fuck down. Okay? <laughs> There's nothing that's happened so far. That leads me to believe that the Heat are out of this, that the Heat don't want Dame. And look, the guy locally who's been more on top of this than anybody else is our friend Barry Jackson, FLA Sports Buzz. I trust Barry's reporting completely. People know I go back 25 years with Barry. But when he just put in a tweet that they there something about them running it back, like everybody went berserk. And the reality is, even if the Heat brought back the team they have right now, it's not running it back. It's a different. This is not like last year. Run just it back is just a trigger word at this point. <laughs> yeah, it's, you're right. It's just run it back. Like we should PTSD. do a T-shirt with that. Okay, so just people could like use it to clean their cars with it or their light toilet. on fire. <laughs> light on fire. Like it, 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 they're not running. Why would you it back. buy it? They're not running it back no matter what. This is not the same team. They, they've changed the pieces around. Jimmy and and now some of it maybe not willingly because maybe they wanted to keep Gabe Vincent if the price had been right, but the, the pieces are a little bit different than they were last year, and they are not going into this saying 
we love our team so much that like we don't want to do anything to it. We're not interested in Dame Lillard. They are absolutely interested in Dame Lillard, okay? But how interested do you want them to act publicly? Do you want them to say, we hate our team? We need Dame so badly, we'll give you whatever the hell that you want. I mean, I am the worst poker player in existence. Just ask my friends, uh, George Sedano, Israel Gutierrez, and uh, others in the Heat Media Group. We used to take my money in my apartment every single weekend, okay? 40 bucks, 40 bucks, and I'd have to buy the pizza. I was out in the first three minutes, okay? And while they watched Monday Night Football, I was finding something else to do. I would love to play poker against some of you people. Me specifically, because, right? Right now, yes. <laughs> because it's like, how do you think this works? Like, you, you're not going to put... You're not going to throw yourself out there and look desperate. The desperate guy doesn't get the girl. What? What? What is, I mean, this is like a whole simping process here. Like, I don't understand where Heat fans are, except, again, that they're hearing this noise and they're freaked out about it. And so they didn't get Bradley Beal or they didn't get Donovan Mitchell or they didn't get this one or they didn't get this one. Well, this is, these are the same people who did get, and I know we go back a ways, but we're talking about Hall of Famers. Like, we're not talking about you got, you know, Mo Will you didn't get Mo yeah. Williams. Or, or Bradley Williams. Beal, even. Or Bradley Beal, right. They they <laughs> they got Alonzo Boarding. They got Shaquille O'Neal. They got Tim Hardaway. They got LeBron James. They got Chris Bosh. They got Jimmy Butler. They got Goran Dragic. How many more do I need to go through? I mean, it's not like there's no track record. Do we want to go through the list of players the Portland Trailblazers have gotten, the Sacramento Kings have gotten, in Chicago, even the, the big market Chicago Bulls have gotten, the Washington Wizards have gotten, the freaking New York Knicks. A whole bunch of garbage. Nobody big market got us Mavericks. And, and Carmelo Anthony when they had to overpay. Do we want to go through this list? So, okay, so maybe the Heat haven't hit on every guy lately. I get it. Did you want to hit on Gordon Hayward looking back? Did you want to hit on Mo Williams looking back? OK, so all I'm saying is this, OK, just to be clear. And then, Greg, I'm going to allow you to defend yourself. Just to start at the beginning here, A, this team is better than the team that they took to camp last year. B, they still should go get Dame Lillard. C, nothing has changed over the past couple of days that leads me to believe that they're less likely to get Dame Lillard. OK. D, are we D, E, F? I don't even know at this point. D, OK. We knew that the way that this was going to have to play out and we said so was, Portland was going to have to look for something. If they're not going to deal with the heat, they got to look for something and see what's out there. Right. I mean, that's because, and you, honestly, this has moved in the heat's favor because before the whole idea was, well, they could just take them into the season. And, but now the reporting from Portland, even the blazer Homer guys are like, no, they really don't want to bring him to camp. That plays into the heat's favor because it gives Cronin less time to find somebody because before what we were saying was, okay, Maybe they want, and this is what the Heat believe, by the way. They that they they might take him into the season towards the trade deadline because just like Durant wasn't enough, or not enough, but they couldn't get for Durant what they wanted. Then I'm talking about the Nets, okay, from Phoenix and other teams at the time when Durant made his trade request. But when they took him into the season, Mikel Bridges, who was not available previously from Phoenix, became available because of an ownership change and an owner who wanted to make a splash. So. We said, and the Heat believed, that if they took Durant, uh, Dame into the season, that they were essentially looking for that kind of thing to play out again. Maybe not from the Heat, because the Heat apparently don't have anything they want. But some other team was going to get desperate or have an injury or make an ownership change or a coaching change or a GM change or something. And then all of a sudden, somebody who wasn't available to them prior, maybe Scotty Barnes, maybe Brandon Ingram, some player around the league was suddenly going to become the Mikhail Bridges who essentially then, okay, Portland's like, okay, we'll trade him now for that guy. But all the reporting is they don't even want to do that now. They, they don't want to take Dame to camp for reasons that we have been saying now for the last two months. It doesn't make sense to bring him to camp, right? So I think the Heat are better positioned than they were before. Does that mean that they're going to get Dame Lillard for sure? I can't tell you what Joe Cronin's thinking. I can't tell you how spiteful he wants to be to Dame, to his own organization. And I also can't tell you that there's not some organization that's just going to go nuts and decide, okay, we're going to spend on this guy who's going to be making $63 million in the last year of his deal, and he's a 33-year-old guard, and we're still going to figure it out. It could happen. It absolutely could happen. But nothing that's happened over the past 48 hours or 24 hours or whatever it is has changed my mind, or I can tell you has changed, more importantly, because my mind doesn't freaking matter, has changed the Heat's mind that the way to play this, okay, is to sit back. Let them try to find something. We're here. 
You know what our assets are. You don't want to tell us what you want, <laughs> but you know what our assets are. You don't want to tell us what restaurant you want to eat at, but you know the restaurants in town. So you let us know. Is it going to be Chinese? Is it going to be Italian? Is it going to be Indian? Is it going to be Thai? Okay, we're right here. Greg, go. You did A, B, C, D, E, F. Well, now we'll go to G, Greg. Um, I, I want to defend myself first by saying that yesterday I was extremely vulnerable coming off of a <laughs> flu-like uh, week in Minneapolis where I lost 12 pounds laying around in a hotel room. It we're was no awful. no excuses organization. <laughs> there is no excuse. That's correct. Enough. And also, I also want to point out, Ethan is a much more advanced and much more sourced individual than I. And so he's been through these rodeos much more than I. And I'm not afraid to say that. I started as a fan, and that is part of this. And I have to – often, Ethan is um, having to uh, redirect my emotions from analyst to fan and, and that balance. So anyway, that's the kind of stuff that I'm dealing with. Uh, and, and I want that to be known that aside, what got weird for me is that throughout the day, I'd say, let's just say 48 hours. So we go all encompassing. What got weird was that I was getting barrages of text messages while having a headache and having to run to the bathroom constantly from all different people that I know don't communicate normally, mm -hmm. uh, throughout the, the Twitter sphere or text messages. Like this isn't just like group chat stuff. Like this is coming from directions with people that I know don't communicate with very similar information, which we'll get into some of what was talked about. Um, and, but then they came back with this Toronto stuff getting louder. And I just, at that moment in time, there's a part of me that starts to, uh, frankly have a little bit of PTSD with what's taken place recently. And also because I just can't, and I know that the Heat know this. And ultimately, uh, you're, you're open to this show, Ethan, was a meditative practice for me. I just closed my eyes and, and, uh, and subconsciously got a lot more calm throughout it. Uh, there's just a part of this where you worry that the guy said, and, and the Heat have said, if a guy says only Miami, that he wants to come, we're going to get him. And so when that has happened and then you start to hear other teams and teams that you know can get frisky and also a really unstable organization and the heat, at least in those 48 hours we're discussing, not now, but the 48 hours prior, were pretty damn quiet. That mixture had me reacting to other people's reports, which Ethan, I know you said to me, and I think you're right. It's a lot of misdirection. It's a lot of speculative stuff being put out to connect dots, to try to get leverage on Portland's side. That's why it's a lot louder coming from the West Coast than it is from the East. And so I understand all of that. And you have completely calmed my anxiety of yesterday. I felt much better today. I think that that coincides with a change in perspective here. But I think that the fans ultimately, this comes from a place of, and it's beautiful. The Heat do this. They're always in the mix for the best players in the league. Let me tell you something. Indiana Pacer fans would die to be in the position that Miami Heat fans are in day in and day out. And I know that for a fact. Orlando Magic fans would die for this to happen because they used to be a more sought after destination than the Miami Heat at one time. At the very beginning, when you got McGrady and, and Hill, Hill in the same there. off season, correct. Yep. So, over um, the heat, by the way. So I, so ultimately, I know that the heat can pull this off. It's just with all the instability, and you know that these factors can change quickly. It got me thinking yesterday, but as we've come back to our senses, obviously there's been conversations, text messages, etc. Um, I feel better about we are, and I think that once we get into why we feel better and like the different. Uh, maybe just some sheer basic framework. It'll make our listeners also understand why this kind of makes a degree of sense when you start to put the teams together, et cetera. All right. So we're going to do that here after the break. We're actually going to let Alex speak. So that's, uh, that's where we're going to get in here because I, I do want to address the I forgot I was on the pod. I was just listening to you guys. No, I, well, I, I know. I, I mean, I don't feel like you're quite as emotional about this as he is this time. I, I but we're going to let you kind of, kind of jump in it's here. Just a day. Let me have a moment. Dan. I, I, no, I, I, I understand it. But when, when you're acting like, I don't know, at heat season on Twitter, I'm just kind of, right. you know, he's tweeting 6,000 times that we suck and Pat's, Pat's asleep and all the rest of this stuff. Oh, but I didn't crazy. say none of that. I mean, no, I mean, I said that if they don't right get game, it'll Instagram be an abject account. failure. And I, you know what? Fuck it. I stand by it. If yeah. they don't get Dame Lillard, this offseason and this process is an abject failure. 
Done. All right, so let's so let's it wait. It doesn't mean that they won't that rebound. Either. It doesn't mean that they won't regroup. It doesn't mean that they won't ex- go far in the playoffs. They'll figure it out because they're the Miami Heat, and they always figure it out. And I've been telling all y'all that since I was the Riley Avi, the Godfather Avi, and y'all none of y'all knew my damn name. So I'm not going against the organization, but to say that Dame says Miami only get the deal done, and I'm not, I, and I'm not listening to anything else. I stand by that shit, but I also understand that I don't know as much about how the sausage is made as you do, Ethan Skolnick. I'm not going to make any other comments about sausage. All right, we're going to get to a couple other first sponsors here uh, oh, as we go forward, gosh. and then we will get into, and then we will <laughs> we will get into. I just got to you know got to laugh at all this stuff because i mean people are people are sitting here like trying to figure out what andy ellisberg's ig is because there is an andy ellisberg at ig that is not andy ellisberg mm. but i follow it just because it tricks people it's fun uh and and so now people are trying to figure out who i was following and whether or not that was the real no i i have andy's real ig it, but you're so you're all communicating with someone who is mm. not actually andy ellisberg so let's just go from there all right we're gonna <laughs> We're, we've, we've got more to talk about here, I think. Uh, with, with And again, we're going to let Alex uh, jump in here. We do want to mention a couple of great sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network. Michael Robert and his team. Uh, well, if it's an abject failure, uh, you might need them to come in and clean it up afterwards. It's water cleanup of Florida. Mold damage, water damage, uh, off-season dame damage. Uh, they'll take care of it for you. Go to WCUFL.com, WCUFL.com. The other thing they can do, and other than after the fact, they can do preventative maintenance. Preventative maintenance. And maybe, the, maybe the laser should have done that with Dame. Uh, and basically, that means you sign up for their program, and they'll do all the the air quality testing, all kinds of other stuff like that. Because you know that the insurance companies afterwards, it's not so great, right? So call Michael Robert and his team nine five four five seven nine zero three five six nine five four five seven nine zero three five six. Water cleanup of Florida. WCUFF WCUFL.com. If you've got the schmutz. They got the guts. All right. So you're officially back now. Also do want to mention better edge, uh, get in our contest for tomorrow. I'm winning right now on a couple of things there. This is legal sports betting. You'll never have to worry about this one because you're betting against others uh, who use it. It's peer to peer. Uh, so go to betteredge.com. It's kind of an innovative thing that they do there. And you get $20 to play. If you sign up with our code, that's five RSN. That's the number five RSN. Both Greg and I are entered into the Sunday NFL tournament. So you can try to beat us there. Um, and again, you can win a lot of money there. And it's only $10 to play. We're giving you 20 So go to betteredge.com, use the code 5RSN, and get $20 to play at betteredge.com. Yes. I tied for first place last week and got 33 bucks on that $10 that I put into that uh, competition. So there is a success story for our listeners. I went one and four. Anyway, uh, okay, let, let's, let's get – I want to pivot here to Toronto because uh, Alex and I, we did an episode on Toronto. Uh, we're actually going to have uh, a Toronto-based guest on our show tonight on playback, if you're listening to that. So here's where things are with the Raptors, and I'm going to go to you on this, uh, Alex. Um, we know Masai Ujiri likes to involve himself in these types of negotiations, but he has not closed a deal in a long time. I mean, the Lowry deal with the Heat, uh, after much machination, after not moving him at one point, etc., uh, and then moving him later. Um, and Toronto, we've said they've got to kind of pick a direction. I, I, I have, you know, when I've talked to people with the heat, they didn't really list Toronto as one of the dark horses in this. We did, but they didn't. I don't know that they take them particularly seriously in this. That's all I'll say. It doesn't mean that Masai can't make a deal here, but it, it but here's the major reason I don't think he will make a deal. Dame's going to be unhappier there than anywhere else. It seems. Um, and, and I come to this because I, I, I know for a fact that, and I'm not going to mention it because again, I don't want to give away people's sources, but a national reporter who is credible. Okay. Who has been on five on the floor before, by the way. Okay. With me, he reported flat out. Toronto is a place that Dame would make it ugly. Like he didn't mention Chicago. He didn't mention any other teams. He mentioned Toronto is a place that Dame would make it ugly. And I know for a fact, 100%, that this particular reporter has a great relationship with Dame's agent and has for a very long time. And people can try to figure it out, but, you know, the reporter's based out in that area. And so I, 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 to me, I mean, without saying it, it just sounds like that message has gotten across one way or the other. And so are you telling me that Ujiri is going to, again, this is not the same situation as training for Kawhi on the last year of his deal. 
Are you saying that he's going to make a deal for Dame Lillard, who clearly for a whole bunch of reasons does not want to be there and potentially could make it ugly and could ask for a trade in the first week that he gets there and say, okay, well, you got me now ship me to Miami. Uh, I, I just, I don't see how you can take it particularly seriously. With that being said, could it happen? It could happen. I was talking to a reporter, a friend of mine, Tony Jones, uh, I mean, uh, in, in Utah, and we were talking about the similarities between this and the Donovan Mitchell situation where Utah was speaking to the Knicks all that time, more so than, than Portland's been speaking to Miami. They were having those conversations and everybody knew Mitchell wanted to be a Nick and basically over Quentin Grimes. Okay. It seems it turned out he ends up sending him to Cleveland, which is a place that wasn't like necessarily a priority for Donovan. And Donovan's probably going to end up in New York in a year or two uh, as it turns out, but I'll just go I to agree. this now. Act well, well, we'll see. I, I think most people kind of know that. But, Alice, would you, Toronto, how does it make sense for them? All right, so this is the thing. I We did the episode a few days back when we did the mystery teams. We talked about the Raptors and the Sixers. And at that point, I was definitely you, – you asked me if I consider them to be a real threat, and I said not much. And not much has actually changed since then, but all of a sudden they got thrown into the mix more – like Lake was referring to before, by a lot of different people and all within a similar time frame, which kind of signals, you know, yeah, that play from Toronto was more real than not. Now, the thing is, and I said this on last night's playback, again, check us out, playback.tv slash 5RSN. Everybody was venting. Everybody was having a good time. We had more than 400, uh, we had more than 400 people out there. We had, we had 220 when we stopped it because after an hour and a half. So, yeah. But, um, but yeah, like I was saying, uh, on playback, I just think now it's like, how real of a play was it? How real of a play was Toronto making? How much were they willing to offer in the times that they did speak to Portland? Because I, I would really, really love to know that. Because if you put, to, you can put together a more than competitive package if you're the Raptors. And I think because on the day of the mystery team episode, you know, I I was saying it there. I wasn't sure about the first round pick situation, whether it was three first round picks they had to offer, two or whatever it was. Apparently, they can offer three first-round picks, not to mention Grady Dick, who they just drafted high, and then OG Ananobi. And what really kind of um, started worrying me a little bit yesterday, where I started to feel a little bit like Leif, uh, was the idea that was thrown around that maybe the Blazers would take on OG without flipping him. And so all of a sudden, it feels like that makes a Raptors thing more realistic because it's not like you have to flip OG for picks, which would be what you know one would think a rebuilding team will go for right like to turn it into grady dick and five first round picks as opposed to og who is you know not old but he's more of a winning player for a winning team not a rebuilding team but if they're open to just keeping him and re-signing him because we we mentioned that factor um on that pod the extension if they're just cool with paying him whatever he wants or close to whatever he wants and having him be there part of the part of that rebuild um with their young guys and with jeremy grant it's it's weird, but if they're willing to do that, that makes me more nervous as a Heat fan, right? And I think where people started reacting yesterday, like you mentioned the idea of them sitting back or being not panicked. And then the the, the reporting from multiple people and you who, who said it a while back uh, that they haven't really been talking to the Heat and the Blazers, I think that starts to worry people. And like Leif said, gives people that PTSD of what happened with Donovan Mitchell, what happened with KD, even though these situations were not all the same, I'm not trying to classify them and put them in the same category, but in a way there, there's similarities, right? Because it's, it's trading for the superstar in the Jimmy era. And, and it's also been so recent and it's happened like every summer in a different way, right? Whether you talk about Giannis a few years back, um, you know, the, the Harden stuff at one time, like there's been so many different sagas of, of this similar thing going on throughout this Jimmy era. And I think those feelings start to come back. It's like, oh man, here we go again. Another one, another one's gone. You know, they're gonna lose somebody else. And Toronto's done it before. And I think that's why people get nervous. But as you say, once you really start to think it through, it's just when the when he did it the first time, when Masai did it the first time, he got Kawhi Leonard a superstar at value, at great value. Like DeMar DeRozan was still an all-star, so it wasn't nothing. Yaka Pertle, rotation player, starter level player. Mm -hmm. um and a first round pick it's not nothing but for Kawhi Leonard it's kind of nothing and I don't think that's the case at all this time like you're gonna have to give up a package like what we were talking about before where you're mortgaging your future you know you're trading away the guy you just drafted along with three other picks and OG who, who you drafted and turned into a great player who people want 
Like it, it's a lot. You're not getting, you wouldn't be getting Damian Lillard at value. Not to mention what you said that it seems like he, you know, he's threatening to kind of make it ugly if he does get traded there. I, I just don't think, and you know, as we've already talked about, you add Dame to that team, you're trading OG. We don't really think of it as a championship team. But again, if you're trying to make the case for the Raptors to do this, like, you know, they did trade for Jakob Pertl last year and, and, and trade like a pick or two to do that and then re-signed him because, you know, they kind of had to after trading picks for him. They just let Fred Van Vliet walk and it feels like Dame would be a really nice replacement for them. And again, they would be a good team. They would. I just think it's like, why is Dame is going to make this entire mess and do all of this just to end up on the Toronto Raptors and let the Blazers you know, kind of disrespect them and say, no, you're not, we're not going to give you what you want, even though we didn't hold up our end of the bargain in the first place. Um, I just don't think he's going to take it. And as Aaron Fentry said in our playback last night, I think he kind of looks at it as disrespectful. So I, I just don't see it. But there are things that kind of scare you about it if you're a Heat fan, I think. I would be more scared, though, if Scotty Barnes was on the table. Yeah. I mean, which it doesn't seem like he is. But if they're just willing to take OG without flipping him, that's... I, I, well, I, I mean, you have to look at this from all sides and what makes sense here and, again, what the motivation is. Because if, if the motivation is is to make your team better, which I can't tell if it is from Portland's side, uh, long, I'm, not, I'm not talking about team better because it's not about making your team better. It's about making your organization better for the long term because I don't. this year's team doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter. I, I mean, it should not matter. If you, I mean, if you're trading Dame, you should be trying to get in the lottery as high up as you possibly can, keep that pick, and be as bad as possible. That's how this should work. And, and get Scoot the reps, uh, get Shaded Shard the reps, get Simons the reps, and see how that all is going to work out. Um, but and, and if you're getting Scotty Barnes, then you're getting a, a core piece, potential superstar. We'll see. He kind of stepped back last season a little bit, but you know, you, you see how that plays out. But to get OG Ananobi, who's going to want 250 million dollars here coming up pretty soon. And he's not that kind of player. I mean, he's a good player, but to me, he's like an elite third guy. Like if he's an elite, he's not, I mean, I know he's wanted more, more touches and reps and shots and all this, but you're not winning anything with OG Ananobi as one of your two top players. You're not, not anything significant. So if you're Portland, okay, who's that going to be? You're going to re-sign OG. Scoot is eventually going to be your best player. And you're going to re-sign OG at that kind of money to, to do what, to be with that one in that world. But here's the other thing. If it just comes down to pissing Dame off at this point, which seems like what they want to do, then you do send him somewhere he doesn't want to go. So it's more so not the Portland side that I don't understand. It's the Toronto side. Why Why are you going to go get a guy when it's already been clear he does not want to play for you? And you've like Alex said, they already gave up picks last year to bring back a center who they traded a few years ago, right? Now you're talking about you're going to trade more picks – you're going to part with Ananobi, which maybe you're not planning on re-signing him. Uh, and you're going to – I mean, it doesn't make any sense to me, Greg, from their perspective. Well, the other part of it that doesn't make sense, and I think it was Sam Vicini that – or Vicini, I don't know how you pronounce his last name. I hope I got it right. Uh, he tweeted this, and I agree with it. Um, if Portland was going to bring in Dame, the right thing to do is actually surround him with OG and Siak. Right. And Scotty Barnes, as good as he is, and I just want to remind everyone, like a year ago today – I think Scotty Barnes was probably on and we can just debate on how what this matters or not but he was like Bill Simmons like number one trade chip in the entire NBA or something crazy like that probably not so but he was up there right I um and he didn't have that that kind of season uh if you were going to try to go all out and show Dame specifically Dame to convince him hey this is a situation you weren't thinking about but look at it now to me that would that would signal trying to keep OG. Um, and maybe this is just like semantics, Barnes versus OG. But I think that OG is much more ready to contribute to deep playoff runs than Scotty Barnes is right now. And I just don't see Toronto being willing to trade Barnes in that scenario. So then we go back to OG. Is Dame going to look at that situation in Toronto and say, well, you know, we got a puncher's chance. He's been doing the puncher's chance shit in Portland for the last 10 years. So, like, he doesn't want a puncher's chance. He doesn't want to be the prohibitive favorite on a super team, but he wants a, he wants more than a puncher's chance at a playoff. Right, what's the Miami situation, run. which is perfect in all ways. Correct. For and so, for him specifically, not for every player, but for him. That, that's why ultimately when we finally cycled back and I got centered <laughs> back home. Uh, I, you know, and then we start to hear about maybe the framework of other packages that could be out there, including other teams. It, there's a lot of other angles that make more sense to me. 
you just wonder ultimately because and, and this is the moment and they're not connected they're mm. they're completely different but when all of a sudden donovan mitchell out of nowhere was a cleveland cavalier it was just mm. very it, that is representative of what this is like it's very much like it could change any moment and it's very unpredictable and so that's where i think just heat observers in general are just a little like Toronto's one of those teams that takes big swings. You know, it's not yeah. one of these teams that, and we haven't even heard about a mystery team that but no see, one's I don't think, yet. But see, but see, the way that this is playing out is not the way Cleveland played out in this sense. We didn't really hear about Cleveland a lot. You're right. So then you so, worry so about. I, is I would be more concerned teams? about a team that's not yeah. Toronto You're right. right now. Like the, the Toronto thing is too loud. It You're almost right. seems too convenient because th there's been all this conversation about how Masai can't pick a direction and hasn't done anything in so long. And now all of a sudden he's, you know, they're being out they're out there. And then there's this noise that we heard that he was in and then he was out and then he was back in. And again, we can't speak to timelines and linear stuff because none of this stuff is linear. We don't know when anybody's hearing anything, yeah. but it, 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 I mean, my thing is if it was going to be Toronto, wouldn't it be done already? Agreed. Like, like, so it, I would be more concerned about like, and I'm just pulling names out of the hat like here. Philly. These are some names we talked about Philly or like New Orleans, like, like some team that, you know, we've talked about at times, but like we haven't really heard about them doing anything. And then all of a sudden, boom, he's a Pelican. And we're like, wait, where the hell did that come from? Toronto seems too loud right now. I, I don't know. It, it doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem to make any sense for him. And it doesn't seem like the place that you could convince him to be happy. And that does oh, matter because it Since doesn't matter about the Raptors. Yes. Um, if, can you recall in 20, they, they acquired Kawhi 2018. Nobody was Raptors. Yeah, no. <laughs> exactly. I was about to ask completely, you, the Raptors were not allowed. No, no, right. no. And, and, and that's an organization where stuff does get out and, and there was nothing that this, was, just, this would be like Dame ending up on the Clippers out of nowhere. Right. Cause we haven't like heard the Pelicans about one. The Pelicans or the Pelicans. Like, that's a great, no, the Pelicans one. Feel just like that kind that of team. Like yeah. cause they're a team that kind of needs to take a swing right now. And they have a general manager who has done it before and they've been exceedingly quiet. Again, I'm not saying it's going to be them, but I'm just saying like, it doesn't feel like a Toronto is the team to worry about here. With that being said, he could be introduced as a Raptor. It just seems ridiculous to me. Honestly, it seems ridiculous, not just from the Portland side, but mostly from the Toronto side that you're going to bring in a guy who just plainly does not want to be here. And the other thing about it is that fan base, they know when a guy wants to be there or not. Like they're very territorial about their players. They loved Kyle because Kyle embraced them. Okay. Like that's, that's the whole thing. Like, again, Kyle was a guy who came there with, I mean, had, had you know, some, some not great experiences in some other spots. And then he became uh, a Raptor. And, and here's the other thing. I, I would say this, uh, uh, and, and I, Greg, you put this in the chat. I mean, with the, the relationships that exist there, I, to me, if I'm Toronto, I wait on Giannis. Because I could see Giannis actually wanting to go there. It's an international city. He has a relationship with Masai. And, I mean, to me, that that would seem like, I mean, I, that's the one that I would look at for them. The Dame thing, I, I don't know. It just doesn't. It doesn't make Are sense. Are Raptor fans saying this about the Heat? Like, hey, they, they should just give up on Dame and wait for Giannis. No, because I think that the understanding here is that Dame is the perfect fit for this team. I mean, I, I'm not saying Dame's better than Giannis. Obviously, he's older than Giannis. But for what the Heat need, yeah, he is exactly what they need. Like, Giannis is not what they need. He's, I mean, he's a luxury item in the greatest possible way. But, like, you, you're playing Giannis, Jimmy, and Bam together? Okay, nobody's scoring off them. Are they scoring? I mean, I it doesn't – I mean, you would still need other pieces to surround them. And probably you'd have to move Bam to get Giannis, which is something that they want to don't want to do. They you don't have to move Bam to get to get Dame. Uh, and so I just I don't get it from that perspective. I do. Before we go though, I want to get to one other thing. Well, a couple other things, a couple of news items, if I can remember them off the top of my head. And then we'll go to this this four team deal that we have heard rumblings about. I have um, split into two pods. And others have turned rallies. Yeah, we'll do this real quick here, and then we'll, we'll save the rest for later. One thing I do want to mention is I want to, again, shut down the idea that nobody's interested in Tyler Hero. Uh, just real quick. I mean, I don't know how this ends up playing out, but I'm just saying I know, for instance, Utah has a strong interest. I know Indiana has an interest. I know Brooklyn had an interest. Uh, and those are just three of the teams. I can tell you that Utah would be willing, and I, I've talked to people who are very familiar with their thinking, Utah would be willing to give up a first-round pick and Taylor uh, Horton Tucker – 
or Colin Sexton. I, I think actually you'd have to combine to make the money work, but you they would be willing to give up all of that for Tyler. Okay, so Olenek, though, apparently is not someone that they want to move right now. Okay, I know Heat fans mentioned him, but I'm just saying, like, for those who say there's no market for Tyler, that is just simply not true. And I'm not saying the Heat are trying to move Tyler independent of a Dame trade. They're not. But I'm saying as part of a broader structure, you can absolutely find a first round pick for Tyler here right now and a useful player to either to come to you or to go to Portland or somewhere else. So just want to make clear of that. Um, we're going to talk more about the 14 deal on playback tonight, but uh, Greg, can you just go through what the pieces are? Because this is more, this is beyond, these are others in the media who've heard this, but they're people yeah. that we, we, we respect. For sure. And that I want to make it clear that this is not reporting from us. This is just really basic. Um, I'm going to, go as far to call it speculative framework of what a deal could look like between these four teams. But I will say that we've all heard in some way, shape or, or form that these are the types of teams that are involved in this conversation. It would end up with um, a four team deal like Miami, Portland, Phoenix, and Indiana, which I think is an interesting mix here. Uh, you'd have uh, Portland getting back DeAndre Ayton, Kyle Lowry, who was sitting with Chauncey recently, as we all saw, and Jaime Jaquez, who we know was on their draft board. Uh, you would have Phoenix getting back uh, Yusuf Nurkic, TJ McConnell uh, from Indiana, and then Caleb Martin would get rerouted to to Phoenix. That's Indiana. one of the things we've heard about for Caleb, by the way. OKC and Phoenix have been the two we've discussed. Correct. OKC and Phoenix, you're right. Uh, and then... Indiana would come out of this deal as a facilitator, getting Tyler Hero uh, and also helping with a first round draft pick to sweeten the pot for Portland um, or, you know, picks. I, I don't know how that would work out. It could be a second round pick and a first round pick, something like that. I think Indiana has quite a few picks other than their own still sitting in the chamber. And then the cool part about this deal, from my perspective, was that Miami would land Dame Lillard and Buddy Heald. And so, yes, they would be sacrificing Tyler Hero, Kyle Lowry, Jaime Jaquez, and Caleb Martin. But to get Buddy Heald to replace that shooting and replenish that guard spot with Dame Lillard, you basically, that's your you know starting backcourt to a degree plugged in right there. Um, I would say that that is uh, definitely um, something that, like, we should watch for this as the type of framework. Maybe you insert a Utah instead of an Indiana. You know what I'm saying? But like that's the type of stuff that we're hearing as the packages that may come through um, that could land Dame and maybe even another because I really love Buddy Heald as a fit as well. Uh, but that, you know, take Heald out of it even. That's mm -hmm. the type of deal that I think that we could look for to land Lillard in Miami. All right, we'll discuss it more on playback. Uh, one one interesting part of that is Jovic is not in that deal. Um, so uh, maybe that's a piece that the Heat can potentially keep. I can say that as we're doing this, uh, we have a friend of ours, Greg, who just texted us. And again, this is how quickly information comes in. Uh, and his <laughs> what he's gotten from another source, so what are we? I mean, we're again, fourth hand, fifth hand, whatever, is that that framework that we discussed is more from Miami's perspective Portland is still focused on other offers and basically letting Miami try to come up with multi-team deals to get them done. So again, get this done. So again, uh, the key part of this is there are deals potentially to be made. There are frameworks that can be created. There are teams that are going to want to get involved so that they get a piece of it. Cause typically when you're the third or fourth team, you make it well because the, the two primary teams are motivated to do something. So the thing, if you have people who are experienced enough in executing these deals and keeping people in the deals, which is something that the Heat have had to work with uh, many times over the years, and sometimes teams drop out, another one comes in, and they have a list of who can replace this team and who can replace that team, how the money would work, which player you use, which executive you talk to, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. These things are complicated, but there are frameworks that would exist. And the other point that we want to make here is Portland still doesn't want to deal with Miami. It's clear. They want to find something somewhere else. They want to send Dame somewhere other than his preferred location. Call it spite. Call it trying to get the best deal. Call it whatever you want to call it. That's their preference. My belief remains. Okay. And we'll talk about this more. And again, this is now at 501. We went 44 minutes here. So 501, no trade has been made to this point on a Saturday <laughs> afternoon, Eastern time uh, in right now in downtown Fort Lauderdale. As of right now, I'm still comfortable that they're going to figure out a way to get this done. I, I just, I do not, I still don't see. Scary hours right now with what you're saying. I, st I, st I still don't see the team out there for which it makes sense to kind of empty the clip here 
to get a guy who does not want to play for them. I'm just going to keep coming back to that. I don't trust the Portland Trailblazers to try to do right by Dame Lillard. I don't think they give a damn. I'm looking at the other side of the deal and saying, do you want to be the GM who guts your franchise to bring in a player who's going to be either moody, which I know it's not Dame's style, okay, but it's not going to be happy there and may ask out in a certain period of time. I just doesn't seem like that makes much sense. And the final thing I'll say here is, as of right now, instead of being concerned, Heat officials think the fans you know, are on steroids and Skittles. Have a good day, everybody.